Hello guys, we're about one here and today for my last video of the year I am doing my top 10 favorite decks of 2015. Now these are going to be all the decks I played over 2015 and it's I'm really just going to tell you my reasons for why I, I liked them so much and why I had such fun playing them because I really did have fun playing all these decks even though some of them I didn't get a chance to build in real life I had fun playing them on Death Pro and DN and it was just a lots of fun. So let's get on with this right away with number 10. Now, number 10 is a deck that I liked a lot. It was lots of fun. It was the deck I came into this came into at the start of this year, and it was Satellanites. Yes, Satellanites were my first deck to play in the 2015 year. They were the deck that got me my first tournament victory. They were such fun from the beginning. Even though they did get a little helmety, they were lots of fun to me. And they just have to be on this list because they were one of my most favorite decks coming in, out from 2014 into 2015, and I loved playing them so much. So that is number 10, and now let's go on to the next one. So, number 9. Number 9 is another deck that I had fun. It came out in Cross Souls, and it was a fun deck for me because it was a Pendulum deck, which most of you might know, must know, and it had all the different archetypes from all the different decks from the year before, and it was Zephra. Zephyr was one of my most favorite decks to play last year, and I just had lots of fun playing that deck. It, well, not last year. I had lots of fun playing that deck this year. Even though it wasn't a, such a good deck, it was lots of fun to play. Plus, you could, it has very diff tons of different variants. And hell, even the cards today can still compete because there's still the Yang Zing build, which is still very good, which I like so much because of Zephyr was one of my favorite decks of this year. So that was number nine, and we're going to move on to the next one. Now, number eight is another deck that I had fun playing. It came out quite recently. It was a fun deck to play, but I didn't really get to get many dual videos of it because it was hard because they always scooped before the end of the game, and that is Magi Spectres. Now, Magi Spectres was one of my most favorite decks of this year, purely because of how much it searches and how much pendulum fun you can have. It doesn't need to XC summon, it doesn't need to play fun, plus you can't, it doesn't have everything it needs. But that doesn't matter because you still can do amazing things with the deck. You don't even need to play Magicians with it and or say other things with it, because the deck is such fun without them. You don't need to play Eccentric Hearts for you did it. You do need to play, um... Lust of Pendulum, but that doesn't matter because that's technically part of the archetype because it's even got an XCs that fuses the archetype together So I had to say this was one of my most favorite decks to play of this year purely because of how much fun I could actually have playing it. I didn't play a hybrid build I played the pure build and it was such fun to play plus summoning unicorn without pendulum summoning was pretty fun So that's it for number eight now. Let's move on to the next so, number seven is another deck, a pendulum deck, which I had fun, lots of fun with. It was kind of a spammy deck, first turn, amazing play sort of thing, but I had lots of fun with it, and it was Ignite. Now, Ignite was one of those decks that were hard to build in real life because that one card was so hard to find, and that was Ignite Templar for me. I ended up getting the last Templar, but I didn't end up... but. I didn't end up getting to really play it outside of the DN and stuff, I mean, Death Pro and stuff. But I did end up building it, and I did end up playing it once in a tournament. It got me real far in the tournament till the end, until I got Exitoned. Because that was just before the new ban list, and I got completely wrecked by Exiton on the last game, so I didn't top. That was a shame, but the deck I had lots of fun with, just being able to summon 86 first turn was so fun, plus the amount of pendulum summons you could do, and seeing as it has such good beat sticks, and also you can play stuff like skill training and lose one turn without problems. So I had lots of fun playing that deck, and Ignites were just a lot of, per lot of vanilla fun. So that's number seven. Let's go on to the next one. So number six is another fun deck. It's a deck that really didn't get its support, our support until recently because we're in the 
we're in England, that amazing Englandness, and it is Fright Furs. Now, well, Fright Furs slash Fluffles. Now, Fluffles and Fright Furs, they they're a lot of fun to play. Even when they didn't have Tiger, it was still a fun deck to play, seeing as you could just spam loads of stuff. And my it's kind of like Heroes in a way, which I really like about the deck because of, Heroes has been my favorite deck for a long time, and I just really love decks that fusion summon, even if it's not. Even if they're not using polymerization, even if not that, which Fright First do, they use polymerization and all that, which really made it even funner playing, because it really brings back the old days when I wanted to play heroes properly. With Elemental Hero Strat, with Elemental Hero Flame Wing Man, Thunder Giant, all of that. Just lots of fun playing a fusion based deck with the original polys and everything. So, that was number six, Fright Fur Fluffles, and it was a lot of fun. Now on to number 5. Number 5 is another deck that Fusion summons a lot. I had lots of fun playing it. It was sort of a spam um, type of deck which did a lot of stuff. It, <clears throat> it gave me lots of fun. It won me lots of stuff. And I really loved playing the deck because even before I actually built the deck in real life and started playing it in tournaments, I tested it a lot. And it had one of the best matchups I could find against Clifford, purely because of it had the it could run the most floodgates, and you didn't need to play stuff like and you could play stuff like Mistake and Anti Spell in it, which made it lots of fun. And this deck is Ritual Beasts. Yes, Ritual Beasts were one of my most favorite decks of this year, purely because I can run stuff like Mistake, Anti Spell, Fragrance, um, basically a monster reborn for two monsters. Uh, a card, a trap card that doesn't select, what well, well, does select, which is selects instead of targets, and I could just spam Connorhawk like Connorhawk search, Connorhawk search, Connorhawk search, and I could make a big beat stick that can negate anything. Plus, it was really fun watching Necros cry when when you beat them with a Ritual Beast deck. It really had, I really had fun with this deck, and it was just lots of fun to play. So that was number five, and. I really did love that deck. So let's go on to the next one. Number four. So let's go on to the next one. Number four, which is Yang Zings. Now, Yang Zings was quite a fun deck for me. It had lots of fun in it, and I really did like playing it because Yang Zings was one of those decks that I would never play unless if it wasn't for, say, just trying it, trying something new. Now, I never, I've no, never been particular of synchro summoning. Synchro decks have never really been my thing. But when I picked up Yang Zings, Yang Zings, I had lots of fun with them, and I really did love playing Yang Zings purely because they, the floodgates you could play, and also because the amount of flow it has. That deck really had fun with. Plus, when I composed a pendulum scale or three back row back into the deck of Baxia, it was lots of fun to do. So that is number four, Yang Zings. Now let's go on to the next one. Now the next one is another deck which I had lots of fun with playing to the end of the year. It came out, the rest of the support hasn't come out yet. It's got a lot of support out already, but you can't really play it to its full potential. And that, But that deck, it's fine. You can still play it in tournaments. It's still a good deck. And of course it is DDDs. Now, DDDs are one of my most favorite decks this year, purely because they can do everything. They can Pendulum Summon, they can Fusion Summon, they can XC Summon, they can Synchro Summon. They can... well, they can't Ritual Summon, but they can do so much stuff, and plus the amount of spam potential in the deck. It's got so much fun to it, and I just really love playing the deck. So that's why this is number three, DDDs. DDDs, you will always be one of the best decks in my life. So that is number three. Let's go on to the next one. Number two is another deck that I've been playing for so long, and I was so happy to see it get its new support this year, and it's so obvious what it's going to be, and that's Heroes. Heroes have always been such a fun deck to me. I've always had such fun playing them, and I'm very happy to see that they got new support this year. I just can't believe how much fun I've had playing this deck. Even though I haven't played it in tournaments much, I still loved playing the deck for a lot for fun. And I can't wait to see what what is we're gonna get next because I'm hoping we still get that great tornic that that new wind mast hero another fire mast hero would be great as well and it would just be great to just see these new cards 
I can't wait for more support for this deck, because it's just such fun for me to play, and it's been one of the funnest decks for me to play this year. So guys, that's number two, and we're going to move on to the last one, so let's go. So yes, number one is a deck that I have been play started playing recently because I've been testing it for a very long time, even before the deck came out. It was released in a structure deck quite recently, and that is Odd Eyes Magicians. Now, I don't like the Apex build. I don't like the Magi Spectre build. I like the Odd Eyes build because the Odd Eyes build has such fun to it, and they can just be spam, 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 lock you down for game. I had such fun playing this deck this year, and I can't wait to see what else I can do with it next year. Even though it's, there's going to be stuff like Pepe out, there's going to be stuff like Full Power DDDs, I believe, are coming soon. And we're just getting such broken support. But I still can see this deck being a very fun deck to play, and I can't wait to play it in the more, more in the upcoming year. So yeah, guys, that is my top 10 favorite decks of 2015. Please tell me if you like this video. Tell me if you think that these are my your decks as well. Tell me what you decks you like of this video. And please, in the comment section below, tell me what you would think, what your favorite decks are. So guys, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be seeing you guys in 2016. See you next year.